Hello everyone and thanks for joining us on this Paranormal Pit Stop. Tonight, we'll be exploring a popular 1,514-acre public expanse located off of the shores of the San Pablo Bay out of San Rafael in California that contains within its bounds a 75-acre district preserving prehistoric shell middens alongside the remains of a historic Chinese-American shrimp fishing village. Laden in a mess of multi-use trails, scenic viewpoints, and wide-open spaces, and rumored to harbor countless ghosts and supernatural infestations across its breadth, are you sure you're prepared to brave the history and hauntings of China Camp State Park? Historically, prior to the 1700s, parklands would be frequented by tribes native to the region and inhabited most notably by the coastal Miwok. However, following the 1775 arrival of the Spanish and the founding of the nearby Mission San Rafael Arcangel, the Miwok were all but obliterated over the next century or so. In 1844, Spanish forces would grant lands that comprise a good bulk of our modern park grounds to Irish settler Timothy Murphy, who would go on to act as mayor of San Rafael. However, following the 1846 U.S. takeover of California, Murphy would lose these lands and would pass on a short while later, after which his property was purchased under Sonoma County businessmen John and George McNear, who would establish a local dairy ranch, quarry, and brickyard amongst other ventures, all the while utilizing utilizing a Chinese workforce. By the 1880s, Chinese immigrants to the region had established a Chinese-American village of approximately 500 residents at China Camp, which would support itself by way of shrimp fishing on the San Pablo Bay and through various town features. And through its heyday, this community would actually sport three general stores, a marine supply store, and a barber shop. By the tail end of the 1800s, this shrimp fishing village was thriving. However, the early 1900s would see the passing of stricter regulations concerning the exportation of shrimp, the use of bag nets, and appropriate seasons, resulting in a severe impact to the community's economy, and in most seeking their fortunes elsewhere. When the dust settled, only one family, the Quans, would remain on site. Following the 1906 San Francisco earthquake, China Camp's populace would boom for a short time as the residents of San Fran's Chinatown fled the chaos and destruction for more peaceful pastures. Over the years, things would slowly return to normal. In circa the 1960s, a majority of lands surrounding China Camp, including future parklands, were acquired by developer Chen Ho and would grow in popularity as an outdoor getaway. As an interesting side note, around this same time, Frank Kwan, grandson of the original Kwan Patriarch at China Camp and the last remaining Kwan alive, continued to reside within and fish the region, selling most of his catch for bait. Through the 1970s, the whole of China Camp lands would come under threat of demolition and redevelopment. However, strong local outcry would see these plans scrapped, and in 1976, the site was acquired under the state, with China Camp State Park officially established. Subsequently, Chen Ho would donate 36 acres of the village itself for preservation as a memorial to Chinese American histories, and when finalized, the general planning for park grounds would even include a stipulation Frank Kwan be allowed to continue living fishing and selling locally. In 2011, sadly, China Camp was selected as one of 70 parks facing closure due to a $22 million budget cut under the state of California. However, the nonprofits Marin State Parks Association and Friends of China Camp, joined by local residents and prominent community members, would protest this closure and would raise funding necessary to save the expanse. More recently, sadly, in August of 2016, Frank Kwan would pass on at the age of 90 while still residing on site. China Camp State Park remains open into the present, offering a range of multi-use trails, the old village for viewing, a small museum which is opened on weekends, campsites, picnic facilities, good aquatic expanses for kayaking, paddleboarding, and sailing, and a variety of outdoor activity zones. Chillingly, over its lengthy existence, China Camp has been shrouded in a number of local legends and ghost stories, some claiming its bounds as haunted by the spirits of the Miwok, either who passed from disease near or whose graves were later disturbed, while others by the souls of Chinese immigrants who were killed in a particularly bad fight that transpired in 1956, and others still by ghosts resulting from the 1975 barbecue murders, and those who have frequented the park have reported extreme cold spots felt even through the heat of summer, disembodied voices heard from vacant spaces, ghostly footsteps that follow lone walkers, and strange lights like lantern glows observed making their ways through buildings after dark. 
The aforementioned 1975 barbecue murders entail an incident in which Marlene Olive and her boyfriend Chuck Riley killed Marlene's adoptive parents, Jim and Naomi Olive, of the nearby community Terra Linda before attempting to dispose of their remains in a barbecue pit or fire located on what would become Parklands. Eventually, the couple was arrested and tried for the murders, and while Chuck, who was 20 at the time, was sentenced to life, Marlene, who was only 16, was given a youth sentence and released at 21 years of age, though she would just move on to a life of crime anyway, and continues to this day to divide her time between jail and bouts of freedom. In 2015, Chuck would be granted parole, though it's unknown whether or not he was actually released. The spirits of Jim and Naomi Oliver, whose lives were taken too soon, are rumored to remain around China Camp, and many have reported encounters with what are believed to be their full-bodied apparitions, sometimes in horrifyingly decayed states. Several informal investigations of the camp have yielded high EMF levels, chilling EVPs, and half-formed silhouettes in the backgrounds of photography, while campers and other overnight guests have told of the constant sensations of being watched or of being followed after dark, of the unshakable feelings of dread or terror, of disembodied voices and screams heard through surrounding woodlands late at night, and of encounters with entities that appear demonic in nature. A more current story tells of how in February of 2021, authorities were called to China Camp State Park on reports of a possible dead body. Upon their arrival, officers discovered the deceased body of a man around 30 feet off the main road. While a homicide case was initially launched, this case remains unsolved, and run-ins with an entity bearing likeness to the victim have since become all but common, leading some to theorize this mystery man's unknown fate led to his spirit's unrest. A final China Camp fable tells of a presence called the Old Man, who some claim looks Chinese, while others describe him as native in physicality. The Old Man has been encountered walking along Gold Hill Fire Road by himself, often after dark, and local legends warn that those who come across him should keep their distance and not attempt to make any form of contact or even let him notice that they're watching, lest they incur his fearsome wrath. Thanks for tuning in for this Paranormal Pit Stop. If you enjoyed our histories and ghost stories, subscribe to our channel, like this upload, and share us with anyone you feel could use a good scare. We'll catch you next time.